Madison Stern, you're one of the new heads of the ESG committee out of the California Lawyers Association. How long has the section been established? Thank you. Um, I'm honored that uh, we've been, um, that I get to be a part of this journey with CLA. Um, I was brought on last year um, by Matt Batista, Matthew Batista, who's on our committee. Wonderful. Uh, I would call him. Yeah, I, I really like Matt. I'm going to be, I'm going to be speaking with him soon as well. Heck yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. He does m and and I'm sure he'll have a ton of stuff to talk about. So he invited me on, uh, and that was November of 2021. And he was like, you know, we really need an ESG committee for, we're trying to look at doing one for CLA. I know you're into the space. Do you want to kind of spearhead it? I'm like, heck yeah, let's do it. Um, ignorance is bliss. No, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's been fun because I really get to meet so many attorneys who are um, either in the space or want to get in the space or just curious about it. Um, and that's, I think, been the beauty of being a part of this uh, committee and growing it from ground zero to where we are now. And hopefully where we get to be in a year from now, we can look back and say, oh my God, this is just beautiful. Look how many people we've been able to impact with all the knowledge that we've been able to share and acquire along the way, speaking with thought leaders um, in the space. What, what is it you sure. want to chat about today? Sure. So I think it'd be fun to just um, chat about what, why there's so many, there's so many ways that, well, there's so many ways that people can get involved in the ESG space without calling themselves, I'm an ESG attorney, uh, because there's just so many, it's such a broad topic, right? Like if we're just looking at you, you're uh, involved predominantly, if I'm correct, unless I'm mistaken, uh, with supply chain, contracts, negotiation, mediation. And that's, that's, that's a huge aspect of ESG, but it's not all of it. Right. And so someone else could be involved with employment law and, and how that pertains to the ESG. Uh, space. Someone else could just be involved with the environmental aspect of the E and S and G. So the, it's just so broad, which I think can make it exciting and also very complicated and nerve wracking um, and confusing. Um, and so the beauty of our committee and and uh, the people that we have involved and um, would like to get, I hope we can get more people involved in terms of legal professionals um, is people from various sectors all coming together to provide their leadership, their their thoughts, their knowledge, expertise, and how we can all come together and create a very, um, I don't know, fee, uh, an environment where we can actually, you know, make, have a positive impact given the work that we do and based on our exactly. skills and different set of skills. That's kind of when, when I found myself um, uh, when I found myself leaning towards supply chains and human rights and supply chains, it was largely because I'd spent the past 10 years working on international commercial disputes. So I had a, a really strong grounding and background in how international business is done. And I thought I could use that knowledge and skills and apply it in a different context to something that I'm really passionate about, which is responsible business practices. And um, but so so that's a bit about me. What we want to talk about is you. What what kind of law? What kind of stuff have you been doing um, before you uh, began to spend so much of your time and energy on the ESG committee? What kind of stuff do you do in your day to day job? Yeah, well, I think a lot of um, what I do is mainly helping out small businesses. So uh, trademark law, uh, incorporations, really not you know just stuff to help small businesses get started. Uh, but a lot of these small businesses today that I'm helping out also want to um, have a positive impact. Uh, and I can totally align. My personal values um, align with that 100%. Uh, I had a previous small business before, and it was really hard uh, for me to want to continue just producing products using raw goods uh, that had a negative effect on the planet. And that weren't actually, the, the sole purpose of selling them was really to make money and, and see happy customers. Uh, but other than that, there was no other positive impact that I could see that aligning with helping out the environment. And for me, it was really hurting because sustainability is a huge, it means it's a big deal to me uh, personally. Um, and I wanted to make it professionally important as well. Um, so so you were able really to focus on that from an entrepreneurial perspective and then, your, and then your instincts and your experience in the entrepreneurial side has allowed you to kind of focus on those same skills and issues when you're helping out other startups and other entrepreneurs. 
Um, yeah, you're obviously you. working with a lot of startups by nature because you're incorporating these entities in a large part, right? Exactly. And then exactly. you're doing trademarks for these companies and things like that. Are you finding, I, I hear it often that I think, especially, you know, start startup entrepreneurs that are from our generation, the newer companies are more and more uh, mission-driven organizations, or at least want to incorporate some type of social responsibility into their into their company. I mean, are you finding that? Yeah, a hundred percent. Look, Madison, it's been really uh, helpful having a conversation with you. I really enjoyed uh, the past few minutes of chatting, and I'm sure that we'll have more going into the future. I wanted to ask you a bit more about the ESG section at CLA and what you guys have in store for 2023. I say you guys, I should, in full disclosure, I'm a member of the ESG section. Yeah, thank you so much. I think it's it's a, it's a great question. And uh, for this year, we have, for one of the things, we have ESG in five, which is a little bit about what we're doing right now, um, hoping to bring on more thought leaders into the space and um, sharing little tidbits about what they're doing in the ESG realm um, with you as the main host, being able to talk to these people and thought leaders. Another thing that we're gonna be trying to do is bring on uh, more content that's created in-house. So if anyone's ever interested uh, to discuss in writing something that they're working on or regulatory, um, something in legislation that they're looking at and following very closely that they'd like to uh, write about for ESG, uh, our ESG committee there. We are happy to talk to people about that and welcome them on. Um, another thing is just providing a our webpage uh, from if you go to CLA's uh, website and then you'll find our specific webpage for ESG, you'll find that we have a an abundance of information uh, for people to learn more about this, whether it's articles, uh, learn more about within the E section or the S section or the G section, um, as well as legislation. We're gonna be adding that on as well to uh, have our pulse, our finger on the pulse of what's going on in that regard as well with uh, bill tracking. So those are just a, a, a sliver of things that we're gonna be doing um, and hopefully a lot more to come. You know, I, I really have to say it, it's very hard going from zero to one. You know, I, I'm I'm a litigation specialist, so I'm writing submissions often. And, you know, a blank page, turning something onto writing something that was once a blank page is very, very difficult. I can't even get those words out of my mouth. The point I'm trying to make is it's really fantastic the work that you and Matt are doing to create this ESG section from nothing. So I really do commend you for all, all of that it takes to do what you've been doing. Um, I can't take I, I, I can't take the credit. I think we have a wonderful group of, of individuals um, coming together to create this beautiful synergy um, and a wealth of knowledge coming together from everyone that's involved in the committee. And there's room for more. So whoever is interested in joining, we welcome them um, yeah. because there's so much more to learn about this space as well. Yeah, and I mean, I think the point you made, though, is earlier is relevant in that you don't have to become a full fledged member and give up, you know, every Saturday, one Saturday a month, you know, we're, we're all very, very busy. But if there's something that you're passionate about that you'd like to write about that you think that other lawyers would be interested in, we'd love to have those articles. Now, speaking exactly. of articles, what are the, some interesting articles you're reading lately in the ESG space and maybe in the non ESG space? Um, that's a good question. I can't say I've been, I can't put my name, uh, I'll give you a name exactly of one article, uh, but I can give you a book I'm reading. Yeah. Yeah. What are you reading? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm one area that I'm extremely interested about is waste. Um, okay. there's this book, I don't know if okay. you can see it very well, but it's called the waste free world. I just picked it up. Very okay. excited to read about it. Now, wait, so do you have any relationship with the author? Is he your uncle no. or something like that? Is this a plug or this is just no plug. a completely neutral no plug. plug? Completely neutral plug. Uh, the title of the book is called How the Circular Economy Will Take Less, Make More, and Save the Planet. Um, it may or may not be relevant to attorneys uh, specifically, but I think it is uh, relevant to people who are interested in the ESG space. Another one that I have read, and I find it valuable in terms of just um, learning a little bit more about what chief sustainability officers do uh, and how they go about their 
uh, operations in their roles at big companies. This is a great book. I don't know if you've heard of this one, Patrick, but- No, who wrote that? Chrissa Pagitsas. I hope okay. I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Uh, <laughs> but she a CSO she, at a company? She is actually the interviewer of all these um, other okay. individuals who are CSOs. And she oh. does have experience before that, but you can learn about what the uh, CSO does at Ikea, um, other big names. That was just the most recent one that I read. And you can kind of peruse through in their interviews and they really give solid understanding of how these people are going about it in these huge uh, corporations uh, managing to, you know, tackle sustainability issues, um, so ESG issues, uh, which great. I think I is think, wonderful. I, I so. think that's a really, really great place to end because we've talked about small startup companies, we've talked about working with mid-sized companies, and we've talked about the work we'll do with uh, the largest companies in the world. So it's really great to know that ESG is affecting all of these different companies at these different stages in different ways. And we as lawyers have a duty and a a privilege to help those companies. Exactly. That's so beautifully said.